I haven't Hi, seen you. Hi, welcome back. You were so missed. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, good to see you, Karen. Gosh, I haven't Hi, seen Karen. you in over a month. It was even longer than that. My goodness. Uh, How does it feel? You're three hours in being back. Uh, it feels good. It just feels good. Yeah, I'm just filled with gratitude and just thankful that I can Aww. that I can be anywhere, yeah. you know, because uh, I was very, very fortunate. So just to bring you up to speed. So I've been dealing with this, uh, my little tussle with COVID-19 for about a month. I left here the station on November the 20th to go take a few days off. So I took my few days off. So at the end of the few days off, I start feeling sick. I got, oh my God, am I getting the flu? So I went and took a rapid test on a Sunday. It came back negative. I go, oh, I'm good. Maybe it's just a cold. So then I go, I better get the more sophisticated test. So the next morning at eight o'clock in the morning, went over to Penn, University of Pennsylvania Hospital over to 8th and Spruce, went in there. And by the end of that night, nine or 10 o'clock at night, I got an email that said I tested positive. So, oh gosh, so I have this. So then I go, oh. So that's what I've been dealing with for the last three, three to four weeks or so. And um, can I just show you my apartment, what it looks like now? <clears throat> Let's see it. Because you know how when you get sick, you just don't care about anything. I didn't shower for like a week, wasn't shaving or anything like that. So Sammy, I don't know which pictures you have, but uh, yeah, the apartment is a, ugh, there's my countertop. Oh my gosh. Oh, wow. Uh, Alex, you've been over to my apartment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's a it's trash building up and everything. I finally <laughs> cleaned it up yesterday when I started to finally feel better. So, but again. So what was it like? How did you feel? Um, I don't. It's it's bad. <laughs> it's it's bad. And I never want to go through it again. And I don't want anybody to ever get it. Just don't get it. Do whatever you have to do. To, to don't get it. I'm not even sure how I got it. But. Um, it's, it's bad. I will say this, Karen, I told this to Alex, I think in my life I've been sicker, like with, you ever, you have the flu mm -hmm. so bad you just want to die, you know, like, but what's weird about this one is when I've been sick in the past, well, you're just going to get over it over about a week or so, but you just, it just lingers and lingers. Plus you have this thing in the back of your head where people are dying from it. So that's why my daughters were freaking out. And I was too. The most, the, the heaviest thing about it was, oh my God, is this how I'm going to go out? You know, yeah. like I said, you, you, other times I've been sick, you know, you're going to get over it. But this one, oh my God, am I going to end up in the hospital? I'm going to, you know, is this how it's, I'm going to go out? And the solitude, right? The the solitude. Were... Yeah. Even though you had a lot of people that were checking on you. Oh, a lot of people, and I really want to thank, that's the main thing I want to say, mm -hmm. um, is thank you for all the well wishes from our viewers and people I haven't heard from in years. Because I think they get concerned mm -hmm. because this is such a deadly thing. That, you know, they're really worried about somebody of my age, especially. But still, I'm fortunate. I never went to the hospital. I'm feeling better. I mean, it's, fatigue is lingering and all that kind of stuff. But I'm still here, and I think of all the close people around here at the station who've lost their lives. I'm sure you all talked about our security guard that lost mm -hmm. his battle. I just saw him the day I left. He was down out front here, and he died over the weekend of COVID-19. Um, so... And if, just, if not if people who work here directly, but loved ones and friends and oh, family members, yeah. it seems like everyone has someone they know. Yes. who's been deeply affected by this. So, um, yeah, I, I'm just... Well, we're glad you're fortunate. here. We well, were, I mean, you. everyone was concerned. Mm -hmm. I know, but still, I'm doing fine compared to everybody who's lost, lost a loved one. And Karen, I haven't seen you since you lost your dad. My goodness. Um, oh. I know. It's been some that was rough. That yeah, was really rough. Sure it was. Um, so, but Dr. Mike checked on me every day. And so his, uh, he joins us now as a matter of fact. Hi, Dr. Mike. Thanks for Hello taking there. care of me. Uh, so he Hi. goes, you just need to quarantine immediately. And then you, get, you need to get one of these, which I had already from uh, CVS. Uh, it, what do you call this oxygen meter? Pulse oximeter. 
to check the oxygen level of my blood. So I just turned it on. I'm at 97 right now. He goes, if it gets below 90, you're going to the hospital, that kind of stuff. So if you do get this, and I hope you don't, get one of these things and check your oxygen level on your, uh, on your, on your fingertip. You put it on your index finger and then check your temperature constantly. And I didn't, He's my been doing that today, up. Dr. Mike, in the commercial breaks. He's been checking. Yeah. And writing it down. Literally well, every hour. My heart well, rate's you know up. Why he's, you know why he's doing that? Because he, he sees you and he becomes breathless. Uh, I don't know about oh that. Oh, my gosh. But we haven't seen each other. And so, I mean, you know, I was calling and texting and stuff every day. But yeah. um, I appreciate that. we haven't seen each other. So many people checked on me every day. Mm -hmm. So real quickly here, doctor, because we just heard about this thing over in Europe that there's some new strain that's, that, that, that's out and about. What is this about? Well, it has mutated, like many viruses do. Not to panic, it is more contagious, believe it or not. Up to 70%. Uh, but, uh, by 70%. Uh, viruses tend to try to do things to improve their quality of life, and they want to continue to live on the planet. So it's not uncommon. The thing is that we need to get our vaccinations. We need to socially distance and wear masks and all of that stuff. The thing out of this is we may need a yearly vaccine. I, I, I'm look, I'm, I'm just predicting looking into my crystal ball. Uh, but if the, the virus mutates enough that it's very different, then we will need to reciprocate uh, like we do with the flu shot every year. But the, the thing here is, uh, Michael, uh, you, you did all the right things. You rested, you isolated, you had your pulse oximeter. I know you were taking vitamin D. And for everyone out there who may have COVID-19 or just got diagnosed, you want to make sure you're taking vitamin D because COVID loves people with low vitamin D. And if you do that, and what else did I tell you, Michael? Proning. You get on your stomach yep. and you take deep breaths and hold it. Yeah, I laid out. And a, then you exhale. I, I laid out a blanket in my on my apartment floor and I would lay on my stomach and do some deep breathing oh. exercises. Yeah. And we have some new treatments available. If you were to have gotten sicker, we have monoclonal antibodies. No, oh, now you tell me. Give people. Great. Well, you, didn't, you weren't that sick. All right, all right. All right, and then uh, <laughs> obviously we have we have dexamethasone and things. If well, yeah, I didn't get any of that either. All that. What, I gotta be <laughs> president of the United States to get this stuff? What's going on? I, I know Dr. Mike, got nothing, <laughs> Yeah. nothing. So well, there's a little thing I, I laid out on that every night. And, and what is it called? The breathing? It's called a... Proning. 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 Yeah, just go yeah. prone. You know. Yeah. Yeah. And take deep breaths because this virus loves to cause pneumonia. And if yeah. you do that, some studies have shown it reduces your risk of progression to bad pneumonia. So that's what you have to do. Okay. This little locks on the, 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 the meter that's on my little finger right now. I don't know if you can see it. Do we have that overhead or not? I thought we had talked about it. Uh, it's at 97, my oxygen level. My heart rate's up into the 70s, though. It's probably because I'm excited. <laughs> well, that's good. And what I have found, and remember, we had that other patient of mine that, that we had on TV. That's right. And his oxygen level went down to 80. And that's when we, I got Whoa. right to the ER. Yeah. And be honest with you, saved his life. So wow. everyone really should have one of those. Dr. Mike, thanks for taking care of me. Love uh, you. Oh. Love you. Thank you again for, uh, there I am. I'm at 98 and 72. 98's way up there. That's good. Okay.